On this snowflake table runner, the snowflakes are hand stitched with pinch stitch. This technique uh, is a quick and easy way to add both color and texture to your work. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and today I'm going to show you how to make pinch stitch. This stitch comes from traditional Korean pajagi where it's called gojipgi. You can see this stitch used in these projects. This flower bookmark, the Christmas tree coaster, these falling leaves, and of course the snowflake table runner. You can check the link for information about these projects. So today I'm going to show you two different methods for how to do this stitch and then give you some tips for using it in a project. So today I'm going to be stitching on linen fabric and I'm going to be using pearl cotton thread to stitch with. Now you can do this on any weight of linen fabric and just match whatever thread you're using to the weight of your fabric. This is a medium weight linen fabric, so I'm using a size 8 pearl cotton. If you had a really lightweight linen, you would use a smaller thread, like maybe size 12. And if you had a heavier, coarse linen, you could even use a size 5 pearl cotton. You can also use embroidery floss and just use the number of strands that correspond to the weight of the fabric. Uh, linen fabric is a good fabric to use for this. If you can get your hand on rainy fabric from Korea, or moshi is called in Korean, um, that is a really good fabric to work with, but it can be really difficult to find. So linen is a great substitute. Besides that, you'll just need a hair marker to mark your design, and you'll need an embroidery needle to stitch it with. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do is mark the design. And for this, we're going to use a hair marker. Now, just before you start marking your fabric, put something underneath your fabric, and this will help protect your tabletop from getting any marks on it. And then if you're going to be tracing a design, such as in the Christmas tree um, coaster or the snowflakes, then you would put the design you're tracing underneath the fabric as well. But I'm just going to freehand some lines on this today. So, Use your hair marker, and with a firm pressure and a back and forth motion, mark the line on the fabric. And there you can see that a crease has been left in the fabric. So now just to set in that crease, we're going to pinch it, which is where the stitch gets its name. and then you can clearly see that line in the fabric. So if we're doing um, a design like a snowflake or a flower or whatever you're doing, do all the lines for the piece and pinch them and then the whole thing will be set in. Then we're gonna take our um, needle and thread and I have a knot in the end of this thread and we'll just come up on one end and I'll come up on the inside. And you can see the knot is just in the end of that crease. And then we'll just go along the edge of that crease with a running stitch. And so you want to leave thread or two between the stitches and the top of that crease. If you have a really fine fabric, your stitches will probably be smaller. And if you have a really coarse fabric, then your stitches will probably be bigger. Uh, but just find what's comfortable for you and try and keep them a consistent size throughout the whole piece that you're working on. And if you have trouble doing multiple running stitches at a time, 
then you can feel free to just do them individually. Now we're going to be pulling these fairly firmly because in this situation we do want the uh, stitches to hold together to hold the crease in the fabric. And then when you get to the end of the row, you'll just bring the needle to the reverse side. So here we can see the back side of the stitches. So we don't want to see a lot of thread on this side. We do want it to be pretty firm. And then to finish off, we'll just uh, weave the thread through some of the stitches and then we back through some and that will finish off the thread securely. So there you can see the finished row of stitching. It leaves this nice um, little pleat. So I've used a contrasting color of thread for this. Um, you can use whatever you like. Sometimes you might want a contrasting color and sometimes you might want a matching color so that there's emphasis on the texture and not the color. So this is the first method of doing this stitch. Now I'm just going to show you the second one. So I'll do the line in the same way. And then I'll start it the same way. Except in this situation, instead of doing running stitch, we're going to do an overcast stitch. So the overcast stitch will add um, a lot more color to your piece. So there you can see the difference between the two pieces. The running stitch has a bit more texture. It holds the pleat a bit more firmly, but the overcast stitch has a bit more color. So you can choose whichever one of these methods you want to do for your project. So that's all there is to it. It's a quick and easy way to add a fun embellishment to your project. If you're going to try this on a project like the Christmas tree coaster, where you have a uh, finished square fabric that you're going to be joining with other fabrics and piecing, then you want to cut this piece of fabric bigger than you're going to need, do the stitching, and then measure to size to get the size that you need. Because when you do the stitching, that will pull on the grain of the fabric and so when you're cutting your piece, it will no longer be on grain because the stitching pulls in the fabric. So just keep that in mind for things like the Christmas tree coaster and the bookmark and the snowflake table runner that when you're cutting your pieces, they won't be on grain because this stitching does pull the grain of the fabric. For more information about the pinch stitch and the projects that use it, and for other hand stitching tutorials, be sure to check out my website, ebitastudio.com. Mm -hmm.